From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer. in the matchless name of our soon coming lord and savior jesus christ welcome back to yet another episode of youth focus grass withers and the flowers fall but the word of our god endures forever today we live in a technological era where everything is available at our fingertips but out of it only a small fraction of content is actually able to withstand the test of time and leave a lasting impact on us today we have with us brother johnny workies to talk to us on the topic viral versus classic brother johnny wergis is a bible scholar and a teacher who serves the lord along with his secular work in mumbai so let us sit prayerfully and listen to what the holy spirit has to talk to us today may the name of the lord be glorified hi everyone the topic for this talk is viral versus classic I'll begin by reading a verse from the Bible that's Matthew chapter 13 and verse 52. Every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. So in terms of valuable things or treasure there is stuff that is new as well as stuff that is old. The dictionary defines viral as any content that is uh widely and rapidly circulated so today especially because of the internet we have uh many books many articles many songs many videos that are being constantly produced and being uploaded and then distributed online and it so happens sometimes that uh there's one video or uh one write up that people like a lot and so it spreads rapidly and for a few days uh, it travels all over the globe and then after some time it dies out uh, this is what is meant by viral uh, if you look at people scrolling through their phones uh, it's common to find that they would probably neglect most of the content that is coming in their feed perhaps a video or a picture and uh, then they would focus for a few minutes on one or two pictures or one or two videos which they like so what often happens in this uh, in this kind of situation is that we are spending a lot of time and the actual amount of quality content that we are consuming is very less now although the internet has made viral content very common uh, this is not a new phenomenon uh, about 5 and a half centuries ago the printing press was invented and since then uh, we have had some content or the other that periodically goes viral the first viral author or the first best selling author was martin luther he produced a large number of books and pamphlets that were printed uh, they were printed in large scale it went viral uh, the demand was more than the supply and so there were pirated copies as well so while this phenomenon of viral content is uh, old uh, it's been going on for the last few centuries uh, the extent to which it is happening is perhaps greater in our day and age now here is an interesting exercise that you can do ask your parents or someone from the previous generation about uh, the content that used to be new and viral when they were young and then try to find out how much of that content is still being used or consumed today uh, i remember when i was 5 or 6 years old i got to learn songs from a cassette it was a new worship album that uh, graham kendrick had released uh, and in those days we used to have cassettes that you could play in a tape recorder so i remember learning all those 20 songs and looking back uh, it's now 35 years since then i remember there's one song it's called the servant king 
that has stood the test of time. Uh, it's a popular song that is sung even today. So what we observe is that out of all the content that is produced and perhaps going viral, there is only a small fraction of content that is actually able to stand the test of time. As uh, C.S. Lewis, who was a British apologist of the previous century, he put it this way, he said, uh, the, the newspaper is the first thing that's going to go out of date. Now, in contrast to viral, we have what is classic. The dictionary defines classic as content that is judged over a period of time to be of the high, highest quality and outstanding within its category. So there are some books, there are songs, videos, etc. that were produced long ago, but they continue to be read, continue to be sung or continue to be watched today. And uh, uh, their survival and endurance over a period of uh, time is a proof or a testimony to their quality. Uh, in our church, uh, we uh, use a songbook called the Songs of Zion. Uh, the first song in that songbook is called Praise to the Lord Almighty, the King of Creation, written by Joachim Neander. Now this song is three and a half centuries old and yet it is being widely sung today. It is cherished. Why? Because it touches people's heart. Uh, now, uh, just like it happens today, even in the past, only a small fraction of content has remained as classic. And this shows that it is this fraction of content that was the best among all the content that was produced. For example, some of us know about the hymn writer Fanny Crosby. Uh, she has written songs like To God Be the Glory, Blessed Assurance, uh, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross and so on. Now she wrote more than 8,000 hymns, but only a few of them have endured. And these are no doubt the best songs that she has written. The others have been forgotten, the best continue. So here again, the point that I'm making is that content that is classic is going to be of a high quality in contrast to content that is just going viral. It's going uh, going viral in a flash and it will fade away in a short time. So do not get lost in viral content. Give importance to the classics. Now, what are some examples of uh, classic content? We have the great hymns of the faith that churches all across the world have been singing for centuries. Uh, as Christians, we should develop an appreciation for them. We should also learn to develop an appreciation for uh, musical classics like, uh, for example, Handel's Messiah. This piece, Handel's Messiah, is a two hour long song. The lyrics are completely made up of Bible verses alone. And it's supposed to be some of the best music that has ever been written. Every year on Good Friday, the Royal Orchestra uh, gives a performance of Handel's Messiah in England. So we can see that even secular people are able to recognize the value of good Christian classical content. We have devotionals like there is the Daily Light devotional, one of the best loved devotionals of all time. Uh, we have uh, uh, My Utmost for His Highest, that's a devotional written by Oswald Chambers. There are preachers who have uh, who, who have produced many messages. For example, there is Charles Spurgeon, who is called the Prince of uh, Prince of Preachers. We have books like The Pilgrim's Progress, which Christians have been reading across the centuries. Next to the Bible, The Pilgrim's Progress is one of the uh, most widely read and translated books of all time. We have Fox's Book of Martyrs, which uh, gives us insights into how people for the last 2000 years of the Christian church have been willing to sacrifice their lives for the faith. Now, the most important classic of all is the Bible itself. It has not only endured the test of time, it has flourished and it has spread all across the world. And that is one of the indicators of its supreme value. A recent survey found that on Amazon, uh, devotionals are selling more than Bibles. So we are talking about Christian content here. We are talking about things being bought by Christians, but we find that they are buying devotionals more than they are buying Bibles. This is not a good sign. Um, it, it, rather than reading one verse of the Bible 
and then uh, reading somebody else's inspiring thoughts on it and feeling good about it. What's more important for us is to read the Bible chapter after chapter, book after book, right from cover to cover. The Bible speaks in a contrasting way about things that wither away in a short time versus things that endure. The grass withers away, the prophet tells us, whereas the word of the Lord endures forever. Uh, in, in 1 John, we read that those who do the will of God are going to endure and abide forever. So my encouragement to you is go for the classics. This does not mean that every new content or all new content is to be ignored or rejected completely. But as we read stuff, as we watch stuff, as we listen to music, give due importance to the classics and ultimately give importance to the Bible, which is the best classic of all time. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us and God bless you and keep you safe till we meet next time. May the name of the Lord be glorified. my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer.